There were plenty more Australian runs to be had on the third day of four of the tour game with Kent in Canterbury. Sam Billings would have been hoping to add to his reputation as the penultimate morning began with Kent on 203 for five in reply to the Australians 507 for eight declared, but he was out without adding to his overnight 24, edging Ryan Harris behind. Instead, it was Adam Ball who looked good first thing. He'd resumed his innings on 21 and was soon finding the fence as he moved up to 45, adding 29 runs for the seventh wicket with Mitch Claydon. Ball then gave Harris his second wicket, timing a flick off his hip well enough, but not with the direction he wanted to avoid Peter Siddle in the deep. That ended an encouraging knock from Ball, who was swiftly followed back to the pavilion by Claydon, who ensured that Mitchell Marsh started a very good day for the all-rounder by holding on well to a drive off his own bowling. Adam Riley had made nine when he gave Mitchell Johnson his fourth wicket, a fast ball flattening the batsman's off stump. And Kent were dismissed for 280 when Ivan Thomas, who'd made 13, plugged forward Ahmed to Johnson, who finished as the pick of the bowlers with figures of four for 56. So the Tourists had a first innings lead of 227 and of course there was no thought of a follow-on in a game such as this. Chris Rogers, in spite of making 84 runs in the first innings, wanted more time at the crease as he tries to earn his test place back. As always, batting in his own style, he got off to a very good start. Michael Clark, still looking for his very best form since his hamstring injury ahead of the World Cup, opened up with Rogers to try to have as much time in the middle as possible. Once Riley was into the attack, the skipper began to open up a bit as this pair put on 91 runs for the first wicket. Rogers won't have been too pleased to get out for 45, miscuing a shot off Riley for the first of the spinners, albeit expensive three wickets. That brought in Shane Watson, who was soon playing his shots, this one carrying the distance for a six off the all-rounder's fifth delivery. Riley then made it two in two overs as Clark on 47 tried something similar but holed out to Ben Harmison in the deep, the batsman out with a total on 110 for two. So the lead stood at 337 when Watson was joined at the crease by Mitchell Marsh. If Australia have to decide much before the first Ashes test in Cardiff on July the 8th, it's which player will slot in at number six as the fifth bowler who can bat as well. It's a straight choice between the more experienced Watson, whose fitness isn't allowing him to bowl much at all at the moment, and Marsh, who'd taken one for 35 from 11 overs in the Kent innings. These two matched each other shot for shot here. This was no longer a real contest, but more a chance for individuals to earn that all-important test match place. By the end of this day, Marsh had moved ahead of his rival. Watson had made a 50 off only 43 balls by the time that Marsh took on Matt Hun for the first of his five sixes. Marsh's half-century arrived off 72 deliveries and he was soon clearing the rope again, twice in fact off successive overs from Ball, whose five cost 39 runs. This was now becoming more like a one-day game as the 23-year-old started to really entertain another good crowd. Marsh also struck maximums off Joe Denley to race into the 90s. And then another off Riley, the batsman's third six in three overs, which now had him onto 99 in hardly any time at all. Just the third hundred of his first-class career was made off only 91 deliveries, his second 50 coming off just 19 balls. He struck 12 fours and five sixes in a very enterprising knock, which has certainly given the Australian selectors something to think about. Marsh retired at the end of that over on 101, which left it to Watson to see what he could do. He'd got to 81 when he played a rather uncomfortable slog and was caught on the mid-wicket fence with a total on 290 for four. The Australians batted on until the close and allowed Johnson and Brad Haddon some batting practice as the tourists ended the day on 322 for four, their runs coming at 5.2 per over. They enter the last day with a lead of 549.